everybody and welcome back to some more Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. I want to start today's episode by kind of following up a little bit on something that happened last episode. So, uh, last episode was a little while ago. I apologize for the massive delay uh, since the last episode. I know I've said that like way too many times now uh, in this series, but uh, for those who missed the channel update video, we do have a new schedule uh, for this series. It's going to be going out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from here on out until we finish it, hopefully. Uh, but last episode, we were working on all automating the production of rocket fuel and plastic. And the reason, or one of the reasons why we were doing that was to make the laser drill. It wasn't just for the laser drill because we can use plastic for a bunch of other stuff within the pack as well, but we needed to get emerald ore in order to make the uh, wyvern sword that we needed in order to make the draconic grinder, uh, because we were going to use the draconic grinder to get an automatic wither killer up and running and then use those nether stars that we would get from that to go ahead and jump in to some more draconic evolution. Now, we were having a bit of an issue last episode getting the emerald ore because uh, earlier in the series we were able to make certain ores in the induction smelter by combining up stone and a block of whatever material we were trying to make the ore of. For example, earlier in the series we did it a bunch to get our field full of lapis seeds that we have over here. We got a bunch of lapis ore underneath here and last time when we tried this it didn't work for any of the ores. Like I couldn't make lapis, I couldn't make emerald, I couldn't make anything. Then I reloaded the pack and it worked for lapis ore but not for emerald and then as i've just showed you there by looking in nei now that i've reloaded it again a couple of weeks later it just seems to be working we can now put a block of emeralds and some stone into the induction smelter and get ourselves emerald ore making it super easy for i wouldn't say super easy making it easier for us to jump into and craft up the mob grinder now we're not going to do that in today's episode i will go ahead and quickly just show you guys that it does work here we'll grab a block of emerald and some stone uh, it's not what i'm going to work on in today's episode today I want to work on something. I want to work on two things. Uh, one of them is just like a, a quality of life improvement. We're going to make the Staff of Traveling to make it just a little bit easier to get around the base because as of right now, we have travel anchors placed uh, almost all around the base. Like you can get to almost any platform uh, from any other platform using the travel anchors, uh, but you can't go very far. So you'll see I can't get to the Witchery area or the area over there. I can only get to Sivin, Draconium, uh, and then the Spawn one. Whereas from the Spawn one, I can get to Thorncraft and Batania, Lasers and Automation, but I can't get to the ones that are really far back i kind of have to go round through other um travel anchors to get to them and also if i'm kind of flying or in the middle of nowhere it's kind of hard to use the travel anchors actually it's impossible to use the travel anchors you have to be stood on one in order to use it and so getting the staff of traveling is going to allow us to travel further but also travel to any travel anchor from wherever we are pretty much so uh, before then though let me go ahead and finish this up here if we open up the induction smelter we can put in our block of emerald we can put in our stone and that's going to smelt up together to get us a block of emerald ore which we can then use probably in the next episode and uh, to get ourselves the sword of the wyvern which we can then use to get the mob grinder so is this done it is it's going to be automatically put back into the system and so now if we take a quick look at the recipe for the staff of traveling we can see that in order to make this we need two dark steel ingots and then one ender crystal i'm fairly certain uh, that we already have some dark steel in the system we do does our system know how to make dark steel it does not that is something we should probably teach it to make at some point in the near future here uh, and then as for the ender crystal i'm fairly certain that we should be able to make this pretty easily we need one soul vial containing the soul of an enderman soul vials are really easy to make it's three fused quartz glass and then one solarium ingot and then in order to make the vibrant crystal it's four enderium nuggets four vibrant alloy nuggets and then one emerald electron tube i'm pretty sure that we already have all of that stuff already like the electron tube i think we've got yeah and i'm pretty sure we've also taught our system how to make those yes we could always request more uh, if we needed them i'm not quite sure if we have the other two materials in nugget form we don't but i I am fairly certain that we should have uh, ingots of vibrant alloy lying around. We do. And we should also have ingots of enderium lying around as well. And then much like with the emerald electron tube, we should also be able to autocraft all of those uh, just by requesting it from our system as well. So that's going to get us the vibrant crystal. Now, in order to get the uh, the soul vial, like I said, some fused quartz glass and some solarium. I'm not sure if we have any of that. We don't. And so in order to make the fused quartz glass, we're going to need some quartz. And in order to make the uh, solarium, we're of course going to need soul sand and some gold. Does our system know how to make solarium? It does not that is probably something that i'm actually going to teach you to make like right about now do we have any uh, spare blank patterns we've got one okay so let me quickly grab some soul sand oh we don't have any soul sand we currently are producing soul sand downstairs but we don't actually have any of it going into a barrel oh okay so here's all of the nether quads uh, i think i did say i was going to change this between episodes i do still intend to change it. i just haven't gotten around to it uh, just yet we also don't have any soul sand, actually, which is a real pain in the backside. All right, well, 
Uh, in that case, guys, what I'm going to have to do here real quick, I'm going to go away. I'm going to stop this system for a second so I can get a little bit of soul sand. I'll also make the fuse quartz and the solarium, and I'll be back in a second. And not too long later, now that we've got the fuse quartz and the solarium, we can go ahead and craft all those up to get ourselves a soul vial. Now, the way that these work is kind of like the safari nets from Mine Factory Reloaded. You can right click on any animal or any mob in the game and then go ahead and capture its soul and also the animal disappears. Uh, you can capture its soul inside of the soul vial and in order to make the staff of traveling, we're going to need to get the soul of an enderman. Thankfully, uh, speaking of safari nets, we do have a reusable safari net in the system uh, from earlier in the series when we had an auto spawner constantly spawning enderman. And so what we should be able to do here is just very quickly put this down, grab it in the uh, the soul vial here, and then if we go over to our soul binder, we can put in the vibrant crystal and the soul vial containing the soul of an enderman into the soul binder. And then if we click use player XP, it does cost XP in order to make this work. And you can see here it requires an enchantment cost of 10 as well as 100,000 redstone flux. I'm going to go ahead and use player XP for that. I'm not quite sure if you can use uh, capacitors in this or not. I know we do have uh, some double layer or octanic capacitors inside of the sagmill and the alloy smelter uh, but i don't know if you can put them in there i guess you probably can actually considering it's got the same uh, little icon there below the power bar but nevertheless that's gonna get us the ender crystal we also get our soul vial back which i guess is nice and so if we come on back over to the emmy crafting terminal uh, we can go ahead and craft all of those things together to get ourselves the staff of traveling nice now this thing does need charging up so let's go ahead and charge that up in here but even before we do that you can see that now and uh, no matter where i am i can see all of the uh, travel anchors around the world just by having the staff of traveling in my hot bar which is pretty nice so uh, let's go ahead and charge this up inside of our capacitor bank here that's going to fill up almost instantaneously because right now we can input and output 125,000 rf per tick so it took two ticks which is one tenth of a second to fill this up uh, to maximum power and now we can use this to teleport anywhere really around the map whether it be blood magic and then all the way back over to like the automation section over here we can travel from one end of the map to the other end of the map instantaneously and no matter where we are we can always just kind of make it back to the uh, the crafting terminal super easily as well so now that that's taken care of what i want to work on in today's episode instead of working on the grinder i kind of want to work on a bit of a fundamental problem that we've been having with our automation system up until now and that is how fast our applied energy 62 system can auto craft it was a problem that really became apparent last episode when we were trying to do uh, quite a bit of auto crafting and we, we were requesting certain items like the flux duct and, and stuff like that and our system's pretty slow or at least not as fast as it could be when it comes to auto crafting stuff and there are a couple of reasons for that so the first reason is the way that i've chosen to lay out my emmy interfaces and my molecular assemblers the way that i've chosen to lay these out uh, increases the number of patterns that we can use but it decreases the speed at which they can work so um right now we've got one molecular assembler surrounded by six emmy interfaces Faces. Now, the other way that you can do this, let me quickly find one of these that is like, I guess, empty. Uh, actually, you know what? No, let's find one that's full. Let's grab this one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to surround this one ME interface with molecular assembler. So I'm going to kind of invert what we have already. And I don't think that we have many. Uh, oh, we do have quite a few patterns over here, actually. Do we have space in here? We do. Okay. So what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm going to kind of like dump. Oh, gosh. Some of these are quite far. I'm going to dump all of this stuff into here i'm then going to go ahead and take out all of these and all of these and put them all into like ones over here just so i could take down all of the emmy interfaces behind me and then replace it with the setup that i was just talking about i did just put some of those back into the system uh, i am aware of that i'll have to look and put those back in here uh, actually i'm gonna do it right now because otherwise i will forget let me quickly look for patterns yeah i want you you and you and i want to put those back here here and then I guess the last one can go like there. Sure. Okay. So do we have any more patterns hiding out in here? I know about those ones. Those are fine. Uh, we got one, which we could put away as well. And that's good. Okay. So let me get rid of this real quick. Get rid of you into there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this down and replace it with one uh, Emmy interface surrounded by molecular assemblers. And what that's going to allow us to do, I'm going to put the interface right about there, by the way. What that's going to allow us to do, can I not... <laughs> Can I not pick this up, please? What this going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to use multiple molecular assemblers to craft the same item. Because up until now, if I was to, for example, request, say, a thousand oak wooden planks, and I want to craft those in, say, this here, right here. Uh, and let's say, for example, that the recipe was inside of this Emmy interface. The way that the Emmy system would do that is it would use this one molecular assembler to craft all 1,000 of those Emmy planks. Whereas if we do it this way,
way, and then let me quickly grab uh, some more uh, molecular assemblers here. If we do it the other way, it can use all six of the molecular assemblers to auto craft them if you have the setup done correctly. So uh, as of right now, we've got one molecular assembler there. I did make sure between episodes that our system knows how to auto craft molecular assemblers. Uh, so let's go ahead and request five more of those. We should have almost everything we don't because uh, the crafting table recipes in my inventory. Let me quickly craft up a couple of crafting tables here, uh, just so we don't have to worry about crafting those up automatically. Molecular assembler, let's request five of those. Hopefully it won't take too, too long to do that. All right, so it turns out they were gonna take a while because they needed to use the uh, the crystal growth chambers to make some Cerdus Quartz crystals. But now that we have them, we're gonna go ahead and put these down just all around like this. And by default, it's not actually gonna be able to use all of these molecular assemblers. And that is where the co-processing units come in uh, as part of the crafting CPUs that we have in the floor here. So uh, right now we've got all of this here. And if, for example, I was to go up and request like 100 furnaces, because I know for a fact that the recipe for furnaces is inside. Uh, it's not inside of there because I have it in my inventory. If we put the recipe for furnaces inside the ME interface here like so, and I was to go up and request a bunch of ME furnaces, I would use the awkward plank example that I gave earlier, but uh, we've only got 244 awkward, so it's not really going to work. Uh, whereas cobblestone wise, we have got uh, 160,000. So we're kind of doing all right on the cobblestone front. Uh, but if I was to go ahead and request like 100 or even like 200 of these furnaces and click start, it's going to go ahead and start using, I think, three of the so you can see it's using these three. It's not using this one, this one. If I was to put down this, it's not going to use that one either. It's only going to use half of the molecular assemblers that are connected to an ME interface at any given time. And that is where the co-processing units come in to the crafting CPUs. What those allow the crafting CPU to do is take advantage of more of those molecular assemblers. I can hear a zombie around. Is that a zombie pigman or just a zombie? It's a zombie pigman, so he's fine. Uh, but that's going to allow the... Um, the, the ME interface there to use more of the molecular assemblers when crafting all of these furnaces. So if we had a Mac up here real quick, I should have pretty much everything we need to make a couple of these co-processing units. Let's have a look. Uh, co processing. I think it's dash processing. Yeah, here we go. Uh, to make these, you need one engineering processor and one crafting unit. I did go ahead and get, I think, everything we need uh, to make quite a few of these between episodes. we got a bunch more. I say that as we don't have enough ME cable to make it, uh, but I did make, or I did request a bunch of the calculation logic and uh, also engineering processors that we need uh, for today's episode. Let me quickly grab some quartz fiber here. We don't have what it takes to make quartz fiber. Are you serious? There we go. Okay, let's make a few of those. We'll make we'll make four for now, and then we'll craft all those up into these crafting co-processing units. And now, how is this doing? Uh, this is still working on on crafting up all of these uh, all of these things here. So let me go ahead and just cancel that craft real quick. How far did it get? It's got about halfway through making all the compressed cobblestone required. Didn't quite get all the way there, and I don't think it's really going to be a fair comparison because we already have uh, the 700 compressed cobblestone there for the next craft. Uh, but trust me, it is faster if we do it this way. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid rid of this and get rid of this. I'm going to put down for now just the one co-processing unit. We are going to add more to this because the more co-processing units that you have, the faster you can make these craft later on down the line. And so if you we were to now head on back up and request the same 200 furnaces, we do want to make sure that we select the CPU that has the co-crafting units in them uh, or the co-processing units in them. And you can see right now it's CPU zero. Let's go ahead and start that. And so one benefit of the co-processing unit is that it can do multiple. It, first of all, it can use all six of these molecular assemblers, but it can also do multiple stages of the craft at the same time. So you'll notice before, uh, the molecular assembler and the uh, uh, ME interface inside of it were making all of the compressed stone first and then using that compressed cobblestone afterwards to make all of the furnaces. Whereas right now, if we look in our system, you can see that the, the system is actively making furnaces whilst also actively making the compressed cobblestone. It's doing both of them simultaneously thanks to the help of the co-processing unit. Now, why would you want more than one co-processing unit inside of uh, a CPU? Well, that's where the acceleration cards come in because if you look inside the molecular assembler here on the right hand side we can put in upgrades and one of the upgrades that we can put in there is acceleration cards and now if we come on up here and do we have any acceleration cards we don't i'm pretty sure we have used them before for our export and import buses but to make them super easily it's one flux crystal and then one of these advanced cards these are made with the calculation processes some diamonds some iron and some redstone real easy stuff i'm going to go ahead and grab quite a lot of these because the end goal is to have all of our molecular assemblers full of acceleration cards to make them as fast as is humanly possible. And so we'll take 26 for now. And if we head on back down here, uh, I'm going to cancel this craft here real quick because we don't really need uh, the furnaces. But we'll get rid of that. And let's say that I put 
five acceleration cards into this one molecular assembler and I go ahead and request another 200 furnaces. What we should see is that not all of the molecular assemblers get used. Now I say that and they are getting used. Let me go ahead and put some more of these acceleration cards in. The more of these that you put in, the less they get used. You can see right now that not this one's not being used, this one's not being used, this one is kind of being used, but somewhat slow considering it's got all these acceleration cards in. Now, if I was to add more of these co-processing units to the CPU, it would be able to use more of these molecular assemblers a lot faster. So let me go ahead and cancel this, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get rid of this cable, and we'll put down another one of these co-processing units once I've gotten rid of this wooden plank. There we go, get rid of that, stick it back down, and let's give it another try. Like I said, we might need even more of those co-processing uh, units. I keep wanting to call them uh, co-crafting units, but we might need even more of those co-processing units. But if we go ahead and click start, uh, it's still not using this one, which is a bit of a shame, but it is using this one quite a bit more. It's got like a constant uh, piece of cobblestone in there. Let me go ahead and throw in as many acceleration cards as we can. You'll see it's not quite able to keep up. And so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to experiment a little bit. I'm going to fill up all of these molecular assemblers with acceleration cards to make them as fast as possible. And I'm also going to go ahead and test out how many crafting core processing units we need on a CPU in order to allow it to use all six of the molecular assemblers at any given time. And I'll be back in a second. All right, so a little bit of tinkering around later, and it looks like the perfect number for six molecular assemblers, all full with five acceleration cards, uh, is five crafting co-processing units, which is a little bit annoying, uh, considering it does make my uh, like lines on the floor here a little bit unsymmetrical, and they also uh, kind of leak underneath the molecular assemblers, but uh, we can always rearrange stuff, and then if I really want it to be symmetrical, uh, we can add more of these crafting co-processing units on the end here a little bit later on down the line, just for sure, more than anything else. But uh, what I want to do right now is I want to do a bit of a test to see just how much faster uh, the molecular assemblers with the acceleration cards and the co-processing units are than the normal like default that we have over here. So uh, what I'm going to do in this ME interface, I'm going to put in the encoded pattern for the furnace and the encoded pattern for the compressed cobblestone. And I think what I might also do, just to kind of make this, uh, again, a little bit more interesting here, is I might also uh, go ahead and grab another two patterns here. We'll do furnace and a compressed cobblestone again, just so that we can uh, compare this also uh, to the old way that we were doing it with one molecular assembler surrounded by ME interface. So let me take this out and then let's go ahead and I guess for now, let me see, can I, oh, we'll do it. Uh, yeah, we'll do it here. Is there any spare space? There is. So we'll put the cobblestone and the furnace in there and we'll see which one of these three can do it faster. I'm going to time this. We'll see how fast they go and we'll start out Oh, and you know what? I'm going to have to take out the uh, the processes, actually. Let me take this uh, here out of here so that, it can, so that it can only make them in this one. So I'm going to start with the slowest and then work the way up, see which one is the fastest. Also, uh, probably going to have to cancel that. Where is that being made? Let me take those out real quick, just so we don't have any interference here. Uh, actually, oh, it's obviously on the back, isn't it? Let me get rid of this stuff. I'll take this and this out of there so it can't be made. And so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to request 200 furnaces and we're going to time how long it takes to make those furnaces uh, with one molecular assembler, no acceleration cards, which is what we've been using up until now. Three, two, one, go. And a little bit of testing later, we can now see just how much faster uh, the system that we're going to be using going forward is than the system that we were using before in previous episodes. Uh, I was going to do some more testing. I was going to kind of mix things up a little bit, do some testing without the acceleration cards, do some testing without the crafting core processing units. But uh, in the interest of time, I decided to just do two tests. One, to see how long it took our original setup here, this one right here with one ME interface and one molecular assembler uh, to craft up 200 furnaces. And then another to see how fast the new system with six molecular assemblers, all full of speed upgrades, the acceleration cards, and then one ME interface in the middle, and to see what the difference was in time. So uh, the first test I did was on this one over here, and it took a painfully slow 15 minutes. 15 minutes to craft up 200 furnaces. That is ridiculously slow. And then moving on to the new setup with the six molecular assemblers, all full of acceleration cards, it took just over 50 seconds to craft. 50 seconds as opposed to just shy of 15 minutes. It was a ridiculous change in the amount of time it took. And uh, that's not even as fast as we could make it. If we were to, for example, uh, split up the crafting of the furnace and the crafting of the compressed cobblestone uh, into 
two different sections here. Like if we had one Emmy interface with the recipe for compressed cobblestone and then another Emmy interface, for example, this one over here with the recipe for the furnace. And then we were to have both of these full of acceleration cards, both of these using a CPU with five or six co-crafting units, it would be even faster. Probably about half the time. It could probably be done in about 25 to 30-ish seconds, which is ludicrously fast, especially considering it took just shy of 15 minutes to do it in the old setup that we had over here. And so guys, what I'm going to do between episodes here is I'm going to change the setup for all of the molecular assemblers and Emmy interfaces that we have. I'm going to take every single one of the Emmy interfaces that is full of uh, patterns here, and I'm going to surround them with these molecular assemblers. We might have to do quite a bit of redesigning for this area over here and spread things out quite a bit. Uh, I'm also probably going to have to make a couple more of these like uh, CPUs here. I'm probably going to make a few more of those and all the ones that we make from now on will have five or six crafting code processing units on them just to make sure that they can use any of the molecular assembler uh, slash Emmy interface setups as efficiently as possible. But with that guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. There as always, if you did enjoy the video, please hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys on Thursday for episode 40. 43.